Hey there, my name is Jaden, here for Foam Armory, and today, fate has intervened. Check it out. That's right, today we are building the Helm of Nabu, the very mantle of Dr. Fate. Recently the shop was commissioned to make two of these bad boys, and I just couldn't resist sharing the process because these things are so gosh darn fun to make. I drafted these templates up in Pepicura, so they are going to be free for you folks down below as a PDO file and a PDF. So without further ado, let's jump over to the bench. We'll be using 6mm HD foam today. HD foam is really nice for builds like this because it doesn't require a ton of cleanup, not to mention there aren't very many surface imperfections, so we're not going to do a ton of filling on it. I pulled out a big old sharpie so that I could quickly trace all these lines out. Of course you can do this in a pen or a pencil, but a big old sharpie lets us be a little quick, a little sloppy, and get the job done just a little bit faster. Since I'm building two of these things, I needed to cut out four sides of the helmets, two left, two right, and of course two fins. With everything all traced out, I pulled out my X-Acto blade and gave it a quick sharpening before diving in to cut out the entire thing. This took very little time, but it is worth noting that everything is cut at a 90 degree angle except the very front of the mask, which does need to be cut at a nice interior angle so that we get a nice point along that front edge that slowly tapers into a nice flat rounded shape across the top of the helmet and down the back. This is a great build for practicing this kind of cut, so feel free to take a couple stabs at it or even make yourself a test run. Remember, slow and steady wins the race here. We want nice, clean edges that won't require a ton of cleanup from our rotary tool later on. With all of our pieces cut out, I gave each piece a solid treatment from my new heat gun. This thing's really, really nice. It lets me get deep bends into the foam that help us along the way. Rather than the foam fighting us as we glue it together, now it'll want to nest ever so gently against itself and glue together very simply. I also gave the fins a bit of a heat treatment themselves, but that was actually because HD foam comes rolled up very tightly, and so it has a bit of a curve to it already, but these fins need to be stocked straight. I round the top edges of the fin to give it more of a sort of Spartan-esque look. I find this effect is easiest to achieve with a stone grinding bit at a high speed moving slowly across the piece. Gluing this thing together is super simple, albeit a little smelly. I use a little bit of scrap foam to make sure that everything is nice and even, and there's no weird chunks forming in my pot of glue. With that, I use a foam brush to apply the glue. I apply two layers, drying them in between with my heat gun, and then pressing together for a nice, even bond that holds together well over time. I didn't actually use any of my registration marks on this particular setup because I wanted to be very quick and I guess that means gutting corners, but you yourself might very well want some of those registration marks to help line up the edges of the piece. I talk a lot about this in our live stream on this build, so if you want more information about that, go ahead and check that out. With the two halves of the helmet fitting together very nicely, very snug, I went ahead and just eyeballed where I wanted the fin to rest, applying my glue, again, two layers, heating in between, drying, and making sure that everything is nice and tacked down. With both helmets fully assembled, I took my heat gun and gave them the cheekbones of the gods. These things look phenomenal with just a little bit of heat forming, so feel free to go to town. After both helmets were fully assembled, I actually went ahead and applied just a quick dusting of Blasty Dip to the seams of the piece to highlight any edge imperfections. That way I could see where I would need to apply my quick seal silicone caulk. This stuff is great, it's paintable, and it dries very, very quickly. Not only that, it's incredibly flexible, so it makes a great filler for our piece. I actually went ahead and applied two layers of quick seals of this thing just to be sure that I had completely smoothed over any edges. And with our piece all sealed and smooth, I went ahead and applied four layers of Plasti Dip to each of these and one coat of Krylon Brass Metallic Paint. And with that, both of these helmets were ready to save the universe.
Much like our recent Cylon build, these two helmets have actually already made their way to their forever homes, so I can't show you the final thing in the 3D here, but here it is in the 2D. These things are a lot of fun to make because they are very easy to make. The only thing you really need to understand to put something like this together is that complex curves are formed when opposing curves come together, and that's a really, really basic unit of foam costuming. The other thing that these helmets teach you as a costumer is to go back in and make sure that everything is smooth, however many layers of filler or sealant that takes. Its success is that it is smooth. As always, the templates for this helmet are going to be down below in the description, so please check that out for yourself, build one for yourself, and if you do, send me photos. I love to see people put together these builds. Coming up next, we're going to be doing some more Star Wars builds. As many of you know, I've been doing tons and tons and tons of Pepicura Trooper buckets lately. We're going to be putting some of those together and doing some very fun releases with that. So please stick around for that, subscribe to the channel. And if you like the video, please feel free to like the video and comment down below. Let me know what you wanna see in the future. Let me know what you think of the build. I wanna give a huge shout out to our patrons, Dustin, Wilson, Matt G, Jennifer Zayer, Pandulce, K-Snake, and of course, Austin of AJ Plays Piano, thank you all so much for helping out on the channel. All that money goes back into the channel and into these builds and these videos and improving the quality. So thank you all so much for sticking around. If you yourself want to become a patron, you can check that out at the link down below in the description. We really enjoy getting out all of these templates in advance for our patrons, as well as a lot of extra bonus templates that make their way over there. So check it out. If you're interested in learning more about Pepikira, I host a weekly live stream every Tuesday, and I also live stream my builds on Thursdays. So you can get some mix of the actual process, as well as an understanding of how to do it yourself. We actually did a live stream for this build, where I showed not only how to go through and unfold the Pepikira model to make these templates, but also how to scale, print, and cut out these templates. So if you're looking for some real in-depth detail on that, Go check that out. I do think there's places for improvement on this build. Uh, for instance, the metallic brass Krylon paint, while it's really vibrant, I can't say the shine was super intense. Uh, and I don't think that's just because I didn't do a gloss undercoat. I think that might be this paint. And you know, even as you look at the image on the can, it's still a little dull. It's shiny, it's metallic, but it's not that sheen that you see on the cap here. But when is it ever? <laughs> I also think that there's places you could go absolutely hog wild with doing some edge trimming on this thing, you know, really outline the edges and, and go nuts. Actually, when I made this build way back in the day, I covered it in a layer of spray glue and dust because I was trying to go for an effect like it had been sitting in a cabinet for a really long time and it worked pretty well. You could also pull out all the stops and go for a lighted eye look. You can use something that we've done on this channel a bunch of times, cross stitch mesh, and just stick some lights behind that. You get a really convincing lit eye effect, but you don't lose a ton of visibility, so it could be a really good option for this build. For now, I've been Jaden, here for Foam Armory. Thank you all so much for watching and please, take care.